أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والعاقبة للمتقين ولا عدوان إلا على الظالمين وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له إله الأولين والآخرين وأشهد أن نبينا محمد عبده ورسوله المصطفى الأمين اللهم صل وسلم وبارك لعبدك ورسولك محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين أما بعد Welcome to another episode of our tafsir page by page and inshallah ta'ala today we're on page 126 which is in the seventh juz towards the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah in the previous verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us a number of important uh, principles and guidelines and some of the ahkam and rulings concerning a particular issue. Allah azza wa jal told us that we should be people who are first and foremost concerned by ourselves if other people don't listen to our advice or they don't accept the guidance of Islam or they reject the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Your primary duty is to concern yourself with yourself to make sure that you are upon guidance, that Allah azza wa jal, what is given to you of the light and the mercy of the Qur'an, that is something which you have accepted and embraced, <clears throat> something that you believe in, in his Tawheed, and in the Prophet wasallam, and then to worry about others. And their misguidance will not affect you if you are upon guidance. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then mentioned to us the ruling of leaving a final bequest, or a final will and testimony at the time of death, and how we should have people who bear witness to it, people who can give testimony to say that that will or that final testament that was left behind by that person who is deceased is the correct thing that they left this world upon. And how those people should be brought forth to bear witness at a time that is after a salah, meaning at a time in which they are likely to venerate the, the time and respect it and honor it and therefore show truthfulness and honesty with regards to the testimony that they're going to be making. And how if someone fears that that testimony that is given is false, then it is permissible for those people whose rights they think have been usurped to give a counter testimony that they think that, that that first testimony was incorrect. And we mentioned that in detail in our last episode. Today we continue with verse 109 and this final passage, today's episode, inshallah ta'ala, and the next episode will be dedicated to the majority of it to the story of the Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. We've said from the beginning of the surah that this is a surah that speaks about the covenant of Allah azza wa jalla and the oaths and pledges that we've taken. And we've taken pledge and oath as the followers of the Prophet and the previous nations that came before us from the Jews and the Christians and others, they also took a pledge. From the ways that Allah mentions or from the, the, the points and subjects that Allah then mentions in this surah is how some people break their pledges, how they break the oaths and how they break the oaths and the covenants that they have made with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And from amongst those people are those people who take their prophets and messengers as gods besides Allah or they take certain humans and elevate them to the status of divinity, of being the divine. And so Allah Azza wa will give to us here the example of the Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in verse 109, أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ يَوْمَ يَجْمَعُ اللَّهُ الرُّسُلَ فَيَقُولُ مَاذَا أُجِبْتُمْ قَالُوا لَا عِلْمَ لَنَا إِنَّكَ أَنْتَ عَلَّامُ الْغُيُوبِ on the day when Allah Azza wa assembles all of the messengers and asks, what response did you receive? They will say, we do not have that knowledge. You alone know the things that cannot be seen. One of the things that will happen on Yawm Al-Qiyamah is that Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala will bring forth all of the prophets and messengers. And Allah Azza wa will question them, question them regarding the message that they were told by Allah Azza wa to convey. Did you fulfill your duty? Did you convey the message? Did you follow, did you command the people to worship Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala alone? And then the Prophet as the Prophet وسلم, told us in a hadith, the example of the Prophet Nuh السلام, that Nuh will be called in front of all of the people and he will respond to his Lord and Allah Azza wa will say to Nuh, O oh Nuh, did you convey the message to your people? Allah tells us in the Quran subhanahu wa ta'ala, as we will come to see in a later surah, that he stayed amongst his people, Al Fasanatin illa Khamsina Ama, nine hundred and fifty years. He spent calling his people to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you convey the message, O Nuh? And Nuh alayhi salam will say, Yes, O Allah, I conveyed that message. Then Allah azza wa jalla will call the people of Nuh, the nation of Nuh, and he will say to them, Did Nuh convey the message to you? And they will say, Ma ja'ana min nadir. No prophet ever came to us, no warner came to us, no one came to us telling us to worship you, O Allah. 
So then Allah Azza wa will ask Nuh alayhi salam, who will testify on your behalf? And then the Prophet Nuh alayhi salam will say, Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and his ummah, they will testify. And we will testify on his behalf based on the truthfulness of his accounting that Allah Azza wa gave to us in the Quran. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call the prophets and messengers and he will question them in that regard. From those questions is, ماذا أجبتم? What is the response that you were given? They will say, لا علم لنا. We don't know of Allah. Meaning many of us died, we passed away. We don't know what happened to our people after that. We don't have the knowledge of the unseen. What took place after we died, that is only for you to know of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. إنك أنت علام الغيوب. For you are the one who knows all things that are unseen and hidden. And so that shows that the prophets of Allah, therefore, don't know the unseen. They don't have knowledge of the unseen. They can't help you with those things that Allah Azza wa Jalla hasn't given them the power and the ability to help you with. And from those things is that Allah Subhanahu wa Taala didn't give them the powers of the divine. They can't grant you children. They can't give you an excess of wealth. They can't uh, relieve you or, or cure you of your illnesses and your diseases. They don't know the unseen, so they don't know whether something is better for you in the future or not, because Allah Azza wa Jalla didn't give them that knowledge. And so Allah Azza wa Jalla will address all of these prophets in that way. And from those prophets, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions here one prophet. A prophet that was taken and he's probably the most famous of these prophets and messengers in the sense that he was the one that was most elevated in terms of being worshipped besides Allah Azza wa Jalla. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned many prophets. Ibrahim and Nuh and Musa and many of the prophets alayhi salatu was salam. But this prophet, the prophet Isa alayhi salam, the prophet Jesus, he was the one that was most elevated by people above his station. And that is why the prophet told us sallallahu alayhi wa in his deathbed, don't go to excess with regards to me in the way that the Christians did with Isa alayhi salam because they took him above his station of prophethood and messengership and they placed him on a pedestal with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah azza wa jal first begins by mentioning the many favors in verse 110 that he bestowed upon Isa alayhi salatu wa salam. Allah azza wa jal says, إِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ يَا عِيسَى بَنَ مَرْيَمَ اذْكُرْ نِعْمَتِي عَلَيْكَ وَعَلَى وَالِدَتِكَ إِذْ أَيَّتُكَ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا وَإِذْ عَلَّمْتُكَ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةَ وَالتَّوْرَاةَ وَالْإِنْجِيلَ وَإِذْ تَخْلُقُ مِنَ الطِّينِ كَهَيْئَةِ الطَّيْرِ بِإِذْنِي فَتَنْفُخُ فِيهَا فَتَكُونُ طَيْرًا بِإِذْنِي وَتُبْرِئُ الْأَكْمَهَ وَالْأَبْرَصَ بِإِذْنِي وَإِذْ تُخْرِجُ الْمَوْتَى بِإِذْنِي وَإِذْ كَفَفْتُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَنْكَ إِذْ جِئْتَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا فَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُبِينٌ Then Allah will say, O oh Jesus, son of Mary, remember my favor to you and to your mother, how I strengthened you with the Holy Spirit so that you spoke to people in your infancy and as a grown man. How I taught you the scripture and wisdom, the Torah and the gospel, how by my leave you fashioned the shape of a bird out of clay, breathed into it and it became by my leave a bird. How by my leave you healed the blind person and the leper. How by my leave you brought the dead back to life. How I restrained the children of Israel from harming you when you brought them clear signs and, and those of them who disbelieved said, this is clearly nothing but sorcery. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives to us here the reminder or rather he tells us of the way that he reminded Isa alayhi salatu wasalam of the many blessings of Allah azza wa jal. This will be before we go into a certain aspect concerning the story of Musa of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. Allah azza wa jal reminds us of the favors that he bestowed upon him, the blessings that he gave to him to show to us the real status of this prophet of Allah azza wa jal. And that is that Isa alayhi salam in our religion in Islam is one of the greatest prophets that Allah azza wa jal ever sent to humankind. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him a number of miracles. And Allah azza wa jal placed at his hands a number of miracles that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala used or showed through them the sign of his truthfulness that he is a prophet and messenger of Allah. Allah azza wa says here, then remember when Allah will say, O Isa son of Maryam, do you remember my favor upon you and upon your mother? Because Allah azza wa not only favored him, but he favored his mother. Then Allah azza wa tell us her story in the Quran. There is a whole surah that is named after her. Her story is mentioned multiple times in the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah azza wa praises her for being from the righteous women as the Prophet told us وسلم, that she was from the most complete women that ever lived upon the face of the earth. That is honor for her. And Allah Azza wa from the greatest honors that he bestowed upon Maryam is that he made her son Isa from his prophets and messengers alayhi salatu wasalam. He said, he says, Allah Azza wa says, reminding Isa alayhi salam of the favors that he bestowed upon him and upon his mothers, إِذْ أَيَّتُكَ بِرُوحِ الْقُدُسِ 
when I gave to you and strengthened you with the Holy Spirit, meaning that Jibreel is the one who came and he blew into your mother so that she would become pregnant with you. And we made and fortified her, strengthened her through his presence, alayhi salatu was salam. تُكَلِّمُ النَّاسَ فِي الْمَهْدِ وَكَهْلًا And you spoke to people in your infancy and as a grown man, as we will see inshallah ta'ala when we come to Surah Maryam, when Isa alayhi salatu was was born, Maryam knew that the people would accuse her of being unchaste. They would accuse her of being immodest, of having done some evil act because she had no husband. She had no man in her life. And so therefore the people will naturally assume what they were going to assume. And they would start to attack her honor and her chastity alayhi salatu was salam. And so from the miracles and the honors that Allah Azza wa bestowed upon this family is that when those people came and they started to make uh, started making those accusations and we will see this inshallah ta'ala in more detail when we come with ta'ala to the tafsir of surah maryam maryam alayhi salam points to her son for asharat ilayh because she took a vow that she would fast and not speak to anyone and so they she points to her son they say to her, how can we speak to a son to your son is a baby in the cradle he's an infant he can't speak doesn't have the ability to converse, but Allah Azza wa Jal gave him the ability to converse. And he said, Inni Abdullah, Atani al Kitab, wa Jalani Nabiya. I am the servant of Allah. Allah has given to me the scripture and made me from his prophets. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored Isa alayhi salatu salam and Maryam alayhi salam in this way. And remember when we stand upon you the Torah and the Gospel and the scripture and wisdom, Allah Azza wa Jal gave to him knowledge. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the religion of Isa alayhi salatu was salam in some ways an extension of the religion of Musa alayhi salam because he was told to uphold the Torah but then he was told that there would be certain changes that he would find in the gospel. And so Isa alayhi salam, that is why till today the, the Christians still believe in the Old Testament and the New Testament. They believe in both of them as opposed to the Jews that don't believe in the New Testament. And so Isa alayhi salatu was salam was given the knowledge of Allah Azza wa the knowledge that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to him from the scripture, from the wisdom, from the Torah, from the Injil, and from the miracles that he allowed him to perform. And by my leave, Allah says, you fashioned the shape of a bird out of clay, breathed into it, and it became by my permission a bird. And that was from the miracles that Allah Azza gave to the Prophet Isa alayhi salatu was salam that you could mold and fashion a bird out of clay. Like just today, if someone was to do the same thing, that's an inanimate object. It is just something which is there as an ornament or something which is just a, a hollow, hollow object. But Allah Azza wa Jal allowed Isa alayhi salatu salam to breathe into it and by his breath into it, it would come to life by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of this, signs for those people. Signs that they would see this and they would know then that this man is not a false prophet. Because this isn't something which anyone can do. No man, magician, no sorcerer, no one, no matter how, how skilled they may be, can do what this man just did. Just as in the time of Musa alayhi salatu was salam, when those magicians came with their magic and their sorcery, Musa alayhi salam threw down his staff and it devoured all of their magic. And they understood that that's not magic anymore. We know what we can do and how skilled we are. We can do a number of things, but that, that's beyond our ability. That therefore is something which is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so that is something which Allah azza wa jal shows to us within this particular surah. So Isa alayhi salatu wa was given a number of miracles. This is from amongst them that he would breathe into the animal and it would come to life. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, And by my leave, you heal the blind person and the leper. That the blind person would come to Isa alayhi salatu wa salam, or the leper would come. And both of these are major illnesses, major disabilities, major difficulties that these people are going through, especially leprosy, which would be something that would, be, would make a person have to be placed far away from other people because of the nature of that disease and how it can spread. And so those people were kept away at a distance. But Allah Azza wa gave the Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wa the ability to go to those people, the blind and the leper, to wipe over them, to touch them, and they're cured by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِذْ تُخْرِجُ الْمَوْتَى بِإِذْنِ and Allah Azza wa Jalla says, and how by my leave, you brought the dead back to life. And that is also from the signs that Allah Azza wa Jalla gave to the Prophet Isa alayhi salatu was salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best how that works. But Isa alayhi salatu was had the ability to bring the dead back to life as Allah Azza wa Jalla tells, us, tells us in the Quran. It is said by some of the scholars of tafsir and others that the people of Isa alayhi salam, because Allah Azza wa Jalla often sends miracles to the prophets in accordance with what their people understand and what they're engaged in and what fascinates them. 
So the people of Musa alayhi salam loved their sorcery and their magic and they were, they were, they were, uh, they were engrossed in the occult. And so Musa alayhi salam bought a sign that was to do with that which they were understood, that, that which they understood uh, and that which they were fascinated with. And it is said, likewise, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we know the Arabs were into their eloquence and their poetry, so Allah azza wa jal gave to him the Qur'an, the most eloquent of books. And the people of Isa alayhi salam, it is said that they were into medicine. They were into those types of issues, remedies and medicines. And so Allah azza wa jal gave to Isa alayhi salatu wa sallam, those things that they would understand then, bringing the dead back to life, healing the blind, healing the leper, that which they themselves knew wasn't possible just by through the virtue of their own science and medicine. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then continues and he says, وَإِذْ كَفَفْتُ بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ عَنْكَ إِذْ جِئْتَهُمْ بِالْبَيِّنَاتِ فَقَالَ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا مِنْهُمْ إِنْ هَذَا إِلَّا سِحْرٌ مُّبِينٌ And how Allah Azza wa Jal from the, the blessings that he bestowed upon Isa alayhi salam, he says, and how I restrained the children of Israel from harming you when you brought them clear signs and those of them who disbelieved said this is clearly nothing but sorcery. And that is because as we know, the Jews don't believe in the Prophet Isa alayhi salatu wasalam as a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And they tried to harm him and they tried to kill him as we know. But Allah azza wa jal saved him as well. He prevented their harm from reaching him because Isa alayhi salatu wasalam as we know was taken up to the heavens by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as we already mentioned in the previous episode when we went through those verses. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says in the next verse 111, this now going on to another story of Isa alayhi salatu was salam, and this is the story after which the surah is named. The ma'idah, the table spread, the banquet, that is, this is the incident now that Allah azza wa jal is going to relate to us. It begins from verse 111 and it continues to the end of the surah. And so we will take some of it today inshallah ta'ala and we will take the rest of it bithnillahi ta'ala in our next episode. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse 111, وَإِذْ أَوْحَيْتُ إِلَى الْحَوَارِيِّينَ أَنْ آمِنُوا بِي وَبِرَسُولِي قَالُوا آمَنَّا قَالُوا آمَنَّا وَاشْهَدَ بِأَنَّنَا مُسْلِمُونَ And how I inspired the disciples, meaning the disciples of Jesus, to believe in me and my messengers. They said we believe and bear witness that we devote ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> Allah azza wa jal mentions this as one of his favors upon Isa alayhi salatu wasalam. And that is that Allah azza wa inspired amongst the disciples of Isa alayhi salatu wasalam, his hawariyin, because the Prophet told us sallallahu alayhi wasalam that every messenger was given hawariyun, he was given close disciples to him. And then he said in the hadith, and if I was to have a disciple from my ummah, then it would be as Zubayr ibn al-Awam radiyallahu anhu arda. And so every Prophet had disciples. From the greatest benefit of blessings that Allah Azza wa bestowed upon Isa alayhi salatu was salam is that he allowed the disciples of his to believe in him and to accept him and to testify to the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to be from amongst the Muslims. And look at how they say here, Washhad bi annana Muslimun and bear witness that we are Muslims. Because every nation of every prophet, the believers from amongst them are Muslims. Islam isn't just from the time of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, even though that's the meaning now that we use Islam for. But in its original form, Islam began from the time of Adam السلام, because it's the same religion. The Tawheed of Allah, worshipping Allah alone, believing in Yawm Al-Qiyamah, all of those issues, that starts from the time of Adam السلام, and it continues all the way up to our Prophet wasallam. And so every Ummah, every nation, the Prophets that were sent to them, the believers from amongst them generally are called Muslims, as you can see here within the Quran. And so therefore, that's important for us to remember. And so they are Muslims, and the word Muslims, as we know, in its original form, means to submit to Allah Azza wa to devote yourself to the worship of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. And so, in that sense, they are all Muslims to Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala favors the prophets in this way: that Allah Azza wa gives to them disciples and people that are close to them, that will help them, that will support them, that will aid them, that will carry their message and convey it to others, that will memorize what they've said, and they will convey to those who come after them and spread that religion after their passing. As, the, as Allah Azza wa Jal did with our, with our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Look at the companions Radiallahu Anhu Majma'een and the important role that they played in our religion. Look at how much they've done for Islam. And look at how much of our religion we are so dependent upon the knowledge that was conveyed to us through the companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That is why Allah Azza wa Jal chose those people. He handpicked them. Abdullah bin Mas'ud Radiallahu An said in a narration of his, he said that Allah Azza wa Jal looked at the hearts of all of creation, all of the children of Adam, and he chose the best and purest and noblest of those hearts 
to be the heart of his messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And then after the prophets and messengers of Allah, Allah Azza wa looked at the greatest hearts, the purest and noblest of hearts, and he chose them, selected them to be from amongst the companions of Allah And that is why they have such a special status in this religion. Allah didn't choose me, Allah didn't choose you, Allah didn't choose my mum or your mum or your father or my... Allah didn't choose the people around us. Allah chose Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali and Abu Huraira and Aisha and Khadija and all of those companions radiallahu anhum ajma'een. Too many to, to mention, too many to name. But we know who they are and the service that they did for Islam. Whether it's the service that they gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the persecution that they suffered, the harm that they had to endure, the patience and perseverance that they had to display at those early stages of Islam, those early days of Islam, those beginning stages of when the religion was first being propagated by the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Mecca and then, for, and then after that in Medina. Look at how steadfast they were. Look at how patient they were. Look at the trials and tribulations that they went through, the difficulties that they underwent by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how they remained steadfast how they were willing to sacrifice the dunya, sacrifice their wealth, sacrifice their lives and their well-being for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for the sake of this religion of Islam. And that is something which not every person can do in those circumstances with that difficulty, that level of persecution, that level of oppression, that level of harm. They're patient with the decree of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, steadfast with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And it's not just a once in a lifetime or generation occurrence, every single day, morning and evening, some of them are tortured in the worst of ways, such as the, comp- the companions Yasir and Sumiya radiallahu anhumah, or Bilal radiallahu an, or some of the other stories that we know about the companions and the difficulties that they went through in the early days of Islam. How often they nearly were killed, how often they were tortured, how often they were persecuted, how often they were ridiculed, how often there was harm that came to them. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us these uh, examples of these companions every single time and every single place, every prophet has them. Our Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was granted those companions. Not only did they aid him, did they support him, did they help him, but those companions would be the ones who would then memorize his religion. They would memorize the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They would memorize and record for us accurately the statements and the actions and the dealings of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his physical description and his character sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then they would go and they would convey that to the rest of the ummah. After the death of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, those companions, many of them leave the city of Medina, their homes, the lands that they're familiar with, their family and relatives, they leave. And they go to the far off reaches of the Muslim empire of that time, to the different regions of the Muslim empire. Why? So that they can teach Islam, they can convey the message of Islam. Who else teaches the Quran? Were it not that the companions left and they went to those different places? They went to Syria, they went to Iraq, they went to Kufa, they went to Basra, they went to all of these different regions so that they could teach people the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And whilst they're there, they're teaching them Islam, they're teaching them the correct belief and aqidah, they're teaching them fiqh and how to worship Allah azza wa jal, they're narrating to them the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so we have all of these narrations and each one of them therefore has a madrasa. They're like a university in and of themselves. And that knowledge gets spread down to the next generation. And then after that generation, the next generation. But all of that eventually goes back to who? To the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa and then to Allah subhanahu wa uh, to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa himself. And so Allah azza wa honored this religion through those individuals. And that is why they have such a high status. The Prophet told us sallallahu alayhi wa that if one of you was to spend the likes of the mountain of Uhud in gold, you were to give that in charity, that amount, it wouldn't equal even a handful of what one of my companions gave, or even half a handful. Imagine, a whole mountain of gold doesn't equal a handful of what they gave. And the Prophet ﷺ didn't say about the companion that they gave gold, he said whatever it is that they spent, and much of the charity that they would give would be dates and wheat and barley, and not necessarily gold and silver, because those companions, radiallahu anhu, many of them didn't have that type of money and wealth that they could be able to give charity and gold and silver to that extent. But even that handful of dates, is more valuable in the sight of Allah Azza wa Jal because of the circumstances that they were in and because of the iman that they showed and because of the support that they gave to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam throughout his life Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And so Allah Azza wa Jal gave to them this high status and that is what Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Ta'ala says about them in the Quran Radiyallahu Anhum wa Radwa'an as we will see inshaAllah Ta'ala when we come to those verses in the Quran Allah is pleased with them, they are pleased with him. 
and that is the best of testimonies because Allah Azza wa is testifying upon the, re, the, the whole generation of people that they are, that Allah Azza wa is pleased with them. And that is why the Prophet told us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Khairun Nas Qarni. The best of generations is my generation. Those people that Allah Azza wa chose and selected to be companions and then obviously amongst them there are those who are greater in virtue such as the Khulafa and the ten that were promised paradise and so on and so forth. But the point being here, the Lord of the generation of companions is a blessed and honorable generation. And so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored those people by being the companions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It is from the greatest blessings of Allah azza wa jalla upon his prophets and his greatest favors upon his messengers that he gives to them those people that will support and aid and spread their religion. And that is what Allah Azza wa Jal is telling us here concerning Isa alayhi salatu was salam. Allah blessed him with disciples. They had Iman, they believed in him, they believed in Allah Azza wa Jal, and they were from amongst the Muslims. In the next verses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will now begin with the actual story of the Ma'idah. But inshallah ta'ala, we will leave that for our next episode, in which inshallah ta'ala, we will also conclude the tafsir of Surah Al Ma'idah. Barakallahu fikum, wa sallallahu ala nabiyyina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم